so searching for answers as to who, what, or why this We are also getting unconfirmed reports of explosions. Was used as a diversion. The situation has changed completely. There is perhaps no one structure that speaks to what America is all about than the White House. Indeed, nothing more than brick, mortar, and wood at the core, but it's the symbol that strikes deep into the hearts of Americans and, of course, its enemies. 200 years ago, the enemy was the British. The government was still weaning itself from overseas rule in many ways, and the angry Brits were not about to let go of the colonies without teaching them another lesson. Welcome to Midpoint, and welcome back. The coordinator and professor of American studies at Lynn University in Boca Raton, Florida, and presidential historian Dr. Robert Watson is here. Uh, also, his book of the way, America's First Crisis, I need to point out. Good to see you again, Dr. Thanks, Thanks for the so plug, much. by the way. No, that's yeah. quite all right. That's what we're here for, a little bit of history and a little plug. It's fine. Yeah. And that White House Down segment that you just showed, that's White House Down 2.0, because 200 <laughs> years ago, the White House was down. It was burned to a crisp. What's some of the backstory years ago now? here on all this, please? Well, the backstory is it occurred during the War of 1812, which was a war that was named for one year, but fought for two and a half. <laughs> Harry Truman called it, quote unquote, the silliest damn war we ever fought, and he was right. What it involved is we tried to invade Canada several times, and each attempt was a disaster and an embarrassment. We had a huge numerical advantage against a few Indians, a few Canadian militiamen, and a few British soldiers who were outcast to the hinterlands of Canada, and they beat us soundly every single time until 1813. In 1813, we tried to sack the capital of Canada, which is today Toronto, where Toronto is today, it was then called York, and we finally find a good general, his name's Zebulon Pike, Pike's Peak is mm -hmm. named for him. And Zebulon Pike annihilates the British in no time at all. He's sitting out front of the fort trying to negotiate the peace, and one of the last cannon shots hit the pow hits the powder supply, blows up the entire fort, sending a boulder hurtling through the air and landing on top of his head, squishing him like a pancake. <laughs> With General Pike dead, the American army that had been defeated for two years, underpaid, hungry, ill-clothed, they went wild, they burned the Canadian capital to the ground. They looted, they attacked civilians, and we soiled ourselves. The British were so outraged, they vowed to repeat the favor. So fast forward to 1814, 200 years ago now, Britain finally defeats Napoleon. With Napoleon now captured in exile in Elba, uh, the British Army is free to send tens of thousands of their best soldiers to the United States to teach us a lesson and burn us to the ground. So General Robert Ross, who's one of Britain's greatest generals, with 4,500, today we would call them special forces, they land in Maryland. They're marching to Baltimore. On the way to Baltimore, they arrive in Bladensburg. They encounter a bunch of American farmers masquerading as an army. As soon as the British open fire, we drop our guns and run like hell. In fact, we run so embarrassingly fast, we almost trample President James Madison, who's behind <laughs> the army. He's almost trampled to death. And they don't call it the Bladensburg Battle, they call it the Bladensburg Races because we ran so fast. General Ross is so emboldened by our cowardice and the fact that there's no army standing between him and the White House. So on August 24th, he marches to Washington, D.C and burns the Capitol, the Library of Congress, the White House burns it to a crisp. And we celebrate this. They're actually having in Bladensburg, or yeah. near, near the actual battle yeah, itself, yeah. and Washington, they're having celebrations for the burning of the White House. Well, That's we celebrate everything. It's a chance to sell postcards <laughs> and, and souvenirs, but there is Last a Last barbecue of the summer, too, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, but there's a happy ending, ultimately, to this whole nonsense. Um, as Ross is burning the city, some crazy things happen. First off, Dolly Madison, the president's wife, is in the White House with one maid. Dolly doesn't want to leave. In fact, she writes a letter to her sister saying, if my husband would have given me enough cannons and men, I would have rolled one out the window of every, of every room and, and fought the <laughs> British. Madison is worried Dolly's going to be captured and killed, so he sends a rider to get her out of the White House. She sends a letter back with the rider. She doesn't leave. And in the letter, she says, quote, unquote, I refuse to abandon my post, which is a great uh, line. <laughs> she saves the Gilbert Stort portrait of Washington and all the priceless artifacts. She skedaddles at the 11th hour before they burn the Capitol to the ground. What happens, though, is right as the British are starting to burn, the men are uncertain, as, and officers are uncertain whether this is really a gentlemanly thing to do. And they 
Uh, there's no army there, but as they're ready to burn it, this local starts leaning out of his house and firing pot shots, sort of like Granny from the Beverly Hillbillies, I imagine, <laughs> shooting at the army. Ross has this guy captured, and he's telling him, tell me where the army is. There's got to be a trap. And the guy, all he says to him is he says, quote, unquote, if General Washington were alive, this wouldn't be happening. So Ross has the guy executed and they start to burn the Capitol. As they're burning the White House and the Capitol, a freakish thunderstorm kicks up, followed by not one but two tornadoes touched down in the mall. More British soldiers are harmed and killed by the tornadoes. This than is by a movie here. It's this a is, movie. This is a great, I mean, we need to get Michael Bay to do this. <laughs> we need movie. to get Michael, really? exactly. Be that would perfect. be my first choice. Uh, <laughs> Transformers or something. But um, what happens is, um, uh, the British are so unnerved by the tornadoes and the thunderstorm, which puts out the fires and saves the rest of the city, that as Ross is yelling orders to his men, one of the men starts yelling, it wasn't a tornado, it was the fingers of George Washington coming down for revenge. Ross decides to skip the burning of the rest of the city, and he marches away, thus saving the rest of Washington. I only got now about 30, 40 seconds left because you've hit everything so perfectly there, but why do we celebrate then the burning of the White House? We celebrate it because a few days later, we wipe out the British at Baltimore. Then Andrew Jackson in January destroys him at New Orleans. We end up winning. The country rallies around the White House. We rebuild the White House. And I found that in letters and newspaper articles before this, we used to write these, plural, United States with a small letter U, capital letter S. After we rebuild it, we started writing the, singular, United States noun with a capital letter U. I've got to let you hear this real quick. Here is UK Prime Minister David Cameron on talking to the president on his official White House, uh, White House visit in 2012. Listen to this soundbite. As I stand here to think that 200 years ago, <laughs> my ancestors tried to burn this place down. <laughs> now looking around me, I can see you've got the place a little better defended today. <laughs> You're clearly not taking any risks with the Brits this time. And the bedrooms are a lot nicer this well as well. Yes, that they are. Doctor, it's always a pleasure to see pleasure. you. Please come back again. Pleasure. We'll tell more stories. And I think, as a matter of fact, right after the show, we need to go out and find a barbecue somewhere just to celebrate. That's right. That's right. No buildings involved. Though. Why not? No, 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 please. <laughs> uh, let's, let, let's not go there. We'll keep right. everybody nice right. and quiet, right. okay? Right. Always a pleasure. Come pleasure. back. Let's do it again. Uh, by the way, that anniversary is on Sunday of 200 years, in case you're wondering. One more break. We come back on point right here on Midpoint.